All right, so we're gonna be looking at um, chapter six of the book, module six for you all. So in module six, we'll be looking at um, some different things that we can uh, format well when it comes to uh, charts. And then we'll also look at um, formatting and creating uh, special smart art graphics and formatting and creating templates. So, um, but with 6A, we're gonna focus mainly on the charts and then we'll look at a little bit of some smart art graphic things that you can do. Um, and then with the 6B one, we'll look at, um, we'll look at making templates and um, some more smart art, smart, smart art graphics. And so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to, I think I need to re-log in, I do. Just so you all can see it in your Canvas shell. And let me know if you have any issues like look, looking at some of these files and some of my, uh, in one of my classes, um, they can't see some of the files unless I make them a part of the module directly as opposed to a part of the assignment. So I don't know if you guys are having those same issues. Uh, so if you are, please let me know because I want to get that corrected then as soon as possible for you all as well. Uh, on my end, it looks like it all works. But then again, I have access to all my files. So um, just, just let me know. So finish that one. Okay, and so yeah, so we're creating charts, diagrams, and templates. Um, so like I said, we're modifying and creating charts, um, seeing how you can format different parts of it, and then we're gonna do the same thing with some smart art graphic and templates. So um, as usual, there are a couple of things here, uh, information for you what you read, and then there's a copy of an old version of the uh, 6C project which can be very helpful when trying to understand different parts of uh, your three projects over the next two weeks. And as usual, there is a PowerPoint presentation um, that goes uh, over different parts as well. So. Yeah, pretty much everything's still here. That's the gist of that. All right, so back to the Excel assignment. So. First things first here, once you got this opened up, which was sent to you in your email, you can look for scripture lecture 6A. Uh, and again, I have against some questions why you just put some canvas, there was not enough room for me to do so. So that is why, um, but anyway, moving forward, you can save this file as uh, 6A underscore attendance if you need to. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move forward to creating some spark lines. Now we've created spark lines several times in several different assignments. And you all are probably familiar with how you can select your data, go to the insert tab, and go to the spark line group and select what kind of spark line do you like? You wanna use a line, you wanna use a column one. Uh, so there, because how useful spark lines are, uh, especially nowadays, is it gives you a little mini graph. You can see trends in your data very quickly. Um, it, it is is good to know that it is actually available within quick analysis. Just like taking sums are, uh, creating charts very quickly. Um, this is all available here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select B4 to F10. And in doing so by selecting data, I get this option here for quick analysis. Control Q will also bring this up. But what this does, it just shows you the analysis tools that are uh, quite useful within Excel and that are commonly used. So when it comes to formatting, conditional formatting, uh, you even have an option to clear it here. Uh, creating some charts, so like the col cluster column charts are common, the line charts are common, we have the stat charts as well, and there's option to get to the more recommended ones as well. Uh, totals, you all are probably used to this one because you've used it throughout several times. Notice what happens to our actual Excel file in the background though too as we do this. Uh, we'll, we'll begin to see it make the possible changes there. If we want to insert this as a table, make this into a table that's available as well. Uh, and then spark lines is here. And so quick analysis tools is a quick way for you to do any type of analysis you may need to. Conditional formatting, creating charts, tables, doing sums, uh, counts, averages, and spark lines. In this case, we're gonna do spark lines and I'm gonna choose line. And notice, again, we get a preview in our actual Excel um, sheet um, of our spark lines there. So I'm gonna select line and then insert those spark lines. Uh, you can notice that we have one, two, three, four, five points, one, two, three, four, five points. So this is going directly off of our data as it should. So we have no issues there. 
So what can we do now? We can do some modifications um, to our spark lines. For instance, with the spark lines inserted, just like every other time you insert a um, insert a certain object in Excel, you get a contextual tab for um, spark line tools in this case, and it's a design tab. And um, in that, we could edit the data that it goes to, but this is correct. Uh, we could change the type of spark line it is. We also can show uh, different parts of it, things that we want to point out or make sure that are uh, shown. In this case, since we're looking from the attendance from 2013 to 2017 to this expo, might be a good idea to show what the um, highest point is on it and what the uh, last point is. So that way you can see, well, what's the most, no, what's the greatest number of people we had and how many people do we have last year? So that can help you prepare for this upcoming year of how many people you think will. So we do that. You can see, like, looking at Los Angeles. Um, they look fairly close. We can tell that it did go down, but we could probably imagine that we might have about the same as we did this uh, high high point year because it is going up again or even higher than that. Um, some of these other ones, like this one, we might say, oh, it's probably going to go up, but probably not that much. Um, this guy's just been going down, really, right? So I wouldn't have as much material ready for that. But these are the type of questions you can ask yourself from looking at um, the result that we have. And by looking at the high point and the last point, that does that for us. Um, you could select other points or uh, click markers, which will show all the points. Um, but it all depends on what you want to look at uh, whenever you're working with smart lines. Okay. All right. So let's change some other things with this. We're going to change the uh, style. So if we go to the style group here, you will see that well, as usual, we have option for more. And we can select from different uh, accents, uh, style accents. You all are used to this at this point in time. Uh, we've done this a couple of times. So I'm going to go to, let's see, at spark line accent one, no dark, no light. Here's no dark, no light. I need accent one. There we go. Reminds me of a Digimon. He used to say, no medium on, no life. No so dark. Okay, I'll stop. Anyway, um, no dark and no light. So in G3, now that we got that all set up, these are our trends from each year. So I'm going to call this trend. And that's pretty much it. Again, you all have created smart lines before. You've, you've even modified the marker colors uh, specifically. So you all are probably used to this. It's just kind of going over it again, just to show you that, hey, it's still there. It's still important. Still something that you can use. And this was newer at some point. What did I call it? I called it trend. Get that yep. All right, sweet. So any questions about spark lines? All right. We're going to move on then to our column and um, chart that we're going to create now. So I am going to go to A3 all the way to F10. No? Okay. Um, so I'm going to A3 to F10 to select my data. That way I can make some. Um, I can make a column chart from this. The reason I'm selecting A3, even though it doesn't have any data, is because I can pivot off of that. So this is where our, our countries are, or not countries, sorry, these are our cities, and then here are our years, and our data changes based off of those. So I'm selecting A3 so it knows that it can switch between these when we insert a, chart, a column chart that we're about to insert. So I'm going to go to the insert, um, the insert tab. And I'm going to go to the charts group and I'm going to go to uh, recommended charts. I already know which one we're going to select. We're going to do the cluster, cluster column one, as we've done many times in this class. But I'm just going to go to recommend it just because it's easier to look at. And notice that it does give us a cluster column chart uh, as the first option here. Uh, because of that A3 being selected and seeing that change in data. And also it helps when um, you have different uh, heading styles for your um, 
for your titles here for your like your column headers and your row headers that helps too so excel recognizes that this is probably what we would want to use okay. and so in this case this is this is exactly what we want so i'm going to select this and we're going to click ok and before i click ok notice that in the chart we get our years will be in the legend and our horizontal category axis will be based off of the um, cities click ok So we got our little chart here and let's see i'm going to move this chart to its own sheet just so it doesn't get crowded up with this data so remember to do that um, if you look at the once you insert the chart you have your chart tools under the design tab in the location group there's move chart click that I put it on its own sheet. So I'm going to name the sheet Attendance Chart because it's based, it's a chart based off of the attendance. Click OK. Now it's on its own page. Well, this looks great. Got it on its own sheet. Um, you got our, our data is very easy to see, multicolor and all that. Um, but you know, nowadays people like things to be all three dimensional. They just like that kind of feel of things. So we're gonna we're gonna change the type up a little bit. So uh, under the design tab, contextual tab, I'm gonna go over to the type group, and I'm gonna change the type of this, and I'm gonna go from just a standard cluster column chart. Uh, and I'm not going to switch to I'm not going to switch to legends in the uh, categories. But what I am going to do is I'm going to make it 3D. Because that's the new thing. And, you know, it looks cooler to some people, not to me. What does it look cooler? So, all right. So next, let's, go to, let's change the style of this. So I'm going to select style three. So it should be the third one that's here. All right, and so this is a different um, chart than you looked at before. So let's take a look at um, some different things that are on it, some that come with it automatically. So I'm going to go to the format tab now. I'm gonna go to current selection group because this will tell me everything that's on this chart. And so look at a couple of things that I have here. We have a back wall. So if I select it, just want you to take a look at what gets selected within this chart. So see how where the dots are. Remember, this is three-dimensional, so that's why there's a back wall now. Chart area you all are familiar with, right? It's the whole chart. Chart title, you're familiar with that. The floor, again, is three dimensional, so we're talking about down here. Notice the little four dots we get. Horizontal axis, you're familiar with. The legend, you're familiar with. The plot area, you are familiar with as well. Remember, it's different from chart area. Chart area is the whole thing, plot area is where your actual um, graphs go. Sidewalls. So look at that there. Got those four blue dot corners. That's the sidewall. And then the last part is look at the walls here, period. Which you want me to see that's selecting all of them. All your walls, your side walls, your back walls. So oops. Yeah. Selecting all of them side wall your back wall okay so just want to show those different newer features and if you ever inserted a new chart that you had no idea what it was or yet you ever used it before it may have elements that you're not aware of so how do you look at them you do what we just did here just go click at the list and see what's on here if you're not sure what something is i don't know what back wall is you just click on it and it'll show me it'll select it okay so 
Bureau of Instructions or you want to change a certain part, that's how you can go around and see what's there. All right. All right. So um, next up, let's change the chart title. I'm going to change it to say attendance because this is based off the attendance, right? Notice that when I selected it, once, um, I, it took me to the formula bar. I typed it up there. When I press enter, it automatically updated here on the chart number. Okay. All right. Well, it tells us to click on, the instructions tell us to click on the tallest column. Do that here. Uh, in doing so, notice that all of the green ones got selected. Well, green represents 2015. So that's because the series, these represent each, each represent a different series, but the series got selected when I selected one of them. If I wanted to look solely at this, this one, I could double click on it. Similar to uh, when we did the pie chart, we selected, if you click on it once, it selects that entire, um, the entire pie chart. If you click on it, uh, if you double click on it, and you'll get that specific data point, and that's what it called it, a data point, versus the series. When you select, it just wants to get all of those. And so these, each part of this legend represents a different series. So that can be important because you may need to change a series or edit a series. That's what you're editing. So it's nice to know what the series is um, in case you ever want to edit them. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so um, let's look at the shortest column here in Anaheim. And that's a different series. So that's the series for 2014. And look, as I hover over, it even says series 2014 legend. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go to the San Francisco one, which is over here. And I'm going to select the, or I'm going to hover over the fourth one. Notice it tells me what series it is in. It tells me the data point that it represents and the value all in the screen tip. So just by hovering over these, it can give you a lot of information. Uh, <clears throat> why is that important? If you're doing a presentation and you want to point out something for San Francisco in 2016, this is how you can do it. You can hover over it. Um, you can also have this, this, um, inf this data information appear directly onto the chart. Um, but if you didn't want to do that, you could just hover over as we did here. All right. So I'm gonna select my chart again, and I'm gonna go back to the design tab. The reason I'm doing that is because maybe you, you're doing your presentation, you don't wanna look at each city separately, you know, like to show what's happening each year within the city. Maybe you wanna look at those years because maybe there's a trend happening within the years themselves that you wanna see. And so I'm gonna switch the, uh, the row and column data Remember, our row headers were based off of the cities, and our column headers were based off of the um, the years. When we look at back at our where our data came from, column headers are based off our years. The row headers were based off of our um, cities. So I'm going to switch them in this data group, and in doing so, it's going to swap them. So when I do that, my legend is now based off of the years. So I get different series. Right, because I had a different number. I had uh, five years before, uh, five series. Now I have six series because I'm looking at it based off of each city. Okay. And from this, it may be kind of uh, easy to even see that there is a trend happening with the years. The years are going up, and then they started going down, and then they went up again. Yeah, I'll do that again. So all I did was click on uh, in the design tab, uh, design contextual tab, in the data group, I clicked on switch row column. And so this is what it looked like before. And when I click on switch row column now, this is what it looks like. So I'm literally, literally sw um, switching the row and column headers um, from this guy. So this is if I, this is if this change to be over here and these change to be up here. Um, in mathematics, they call it transpose. That's what we're doing. We're transposing our data. And that changes the way the graph looks as well. It allows us to look at things differently. So now we're looking at it in um, 
categories of of the years and we're looking at series of the cities so notice the legend change and the horizontal category axis change as well did you get that Okay. All right. So, change to your chart. The three D cluster color chart. Oh, okay. We did all that. All right. So the next thing I'll do is just gonna switch it back. That was just to show you um, the differences between them um, and how you could change that. And it does, again, this does show you a better trend. So depending on what you want it to present, if you want it to look at each city and see what was happening each year, you could totally do that. That's what we had before. And I'll switch it back to that in a second. But from this, we can easily see that the years it did increase. And then after 2015, it began to decrease. And now it looks like it's going back up again. So. That's just something that like whoever's doing this expo should probably expect to have more people because it does follow this trend of kind of going up. All right, just switch the rows and columns back the way they were. You're welcome. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> next up, what we're going to do is we're going to select the chart title. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. All right. So next, we're going to select the chart title. Oh, let's change it. And it asks for me to position my insertion point to the right of it and click inside. Oops. There we go. Press space bar and type location. So I just want this to say attendance location or by location. So I'm just changing the title. So just to show you that you can change that title. And this title makes more sense because if you look at the name of our chart that this data actually came from, it's called Attendance by Location. All right, so now what I can do is, some other things I can do is I can change the font. Uh, a lot of times, what people will do is uh, when they select it, they'll double click and uh, select the, all the text and then go to the home tab and change the font, which you totally can do. But you also, if you select it once, that entire thing is now selected. And then I could just right click on this and I can change the font from here. Okay. So just showing you another way to do so. I believe that whenever the last time we did, I think was uh, we were to look at the pie chart in like module three, um, Sandra actually demonstrated that for us. Um, so. I'm going to go change the font style to bold and italic. And I'm going to change the size to 20. Oops, yeah, it is going to go by 0.1. Um, and then I'm going to apply white background one, darker 50%. White background one. Darker 50% for the color. And I'm going to make it small caps. So here it is. Now, small caps, what that does is it makes the first beginning part of it a little bigger than the rest of it. But everything else are all everything else is still capitalized, they're just a little smaller. All right, cool. There's just some cool font effects that you can mess around with, play with if you like. All right, so uh, let's now 
make some more changes. We're going to add in some titles here because it might be hard for someone looking at this to understand what do these represent. They probably will get it because it says attendance by location. So this will probably you'll probably say, oh, these are the attendances. Yeah. Uh, but just in case, we're going to add in some a uh, couple of axes. So I'm going to go to add chart elements here. So we're in the design tab, contextual tab still. I'm in a chart layout group. I'm going to click add chart element. And as you can see, there's a couple of different uh, elements that I can add to this. Um, but I am going to go to the axis titles. And I'm going to select primary uh, vertical. Notice what I get here. And it's already selected for me because I just inserted it. So since it's already selected, I can go to the formula bar and begin typing. And when I press enter, it should get modified automatically. So this is the number attending notice down there it changes to number attending and if you wanted to if you're having trouble seeing that you could always zoom in uh, i'm trying to make sure i can kind of show all of it at once though so so with it still selected, I'm going to change the font of this. I'm going to change it to size 14. Um, I'm also going to change the color of this guy to that white background, one darker 50%, just like I did the other. So they all kind of match. And that's it. All right, so it's easy to see this is number attending. And now you may say, well, what are these? We know they're cities, but not everyone will know that they're cities, especially they're all cities in California, because these are also names of cities in other locations across the country and the world. So um, let's, let's change this up a little bit. Let's add in a horizontal category axis as well. So I'm going to go back to um, at chart element, and I'm going to select axis titles. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Sorry. So, I'm going to go to the Format tab. And under Current Selection, I'm going to look at my chart elements. And I'm going to select the horizontal category axis. In doing so, it gets selected here. And I'm going to change the font of it as well with it selected. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Do that again. Okay. And then this is all. I'm going to change this to bold and leave it at size nine, I guess. And let's see, change the color to that same white background one, darker 50%. Click OK. And the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to click on the vertical value axis, and I'm going to change its font size to 12. That's all I'm going to change on it. Change this guy to 12. Okay. Makes it a little easier to see, a little bigger. So that's it for that moment. Are there any questions about? Um, so, yeah. Uh, for the number, you put what you, uh, do you do like uh, the size 12 and how about the color, the French color? Um, yeah, I made this to, to size 12. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's all. I just changed it to size 12. Oh, okay. Just the size. Yeah. I'm just following along mm -hmm. with those instructions I sent you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome.
All right, so um, we've done this before, but we're kind of looking at it again. How if this is connected to this data that's on the attendance by location sheet, and so if we made a change here, it would get updated here. And so let's look at San Diego. Um, let's see, 2017 value. So it says its value is 7,877 for this value here. So let's go and make a change to that and see how it gets updated. San Diego, 2017, 7,877. I'm going to change this to 8,261. Now, a couple things are going to change because of this. Oops. A couple things are going to change because of this. Our trend line is going to change because this value is going to go up. The total here is going to change because that value is going to go up. And on our attendance chart, we would expect for this thing to change as well because that value is going to go up. So let's change it. 8261. Doing so, notice everything did increase. Click back over here. You can actually visibly see it for a quick second increase. So if you change the source data that this count that creates this, then this will automatically get updated, which is great, right? Because you don't have to worry about um, having to redo it if you mess up, quote unquote. It's all already there. All right, so next, let's, um, excuse me. Next, we're going to click on the format tab. Okay, we're going to look at the back wall. We're going to start making some changes to these walls in the floor. So I'm going to go to the current selection group, and I'm going to select back wall. So the back wall gets selected. Notice that um, since I have that format pane open, this is already here and available for me to make changes to directly. Um, if it was not, I could clearly, so if it was closed, I could open it up by just clicking format selection with it selected. Notice it's selected here because it's listed there. Also, I know it's selected because I can see it selected with the four dots um, around its corners. But if I click format selection, it will bring up the format pane to the right so that I can then make that change. I know some of you said on your computers, this actually comes up as its own little dialog box, uh, which is to me, or it comes up in a different position than right here on the right side, uh, which is fine as long as you get the format pane. All right. So, some changes we're going to make to this we're going to change its fill. Um, and so, I'm going to go click on fill. You may recall that the paint bucket is where we handle our fill and our borders and like our lines if you had lines. Um, this guy changed the effects, like making it look more three-dimensional, giving it shadows and things like that. And then there was a couple other options we saw that appeared, depending on what's selected. We see like the column one that has to do with the data that's there. So anyway, the wall is just a wall, so we're only going to look at the fills. Um, and we're going to change this to be a solid fill. And I'm going to change the color of it to be dark blue text to lighter 40 percent uh <clears throat> problem or not really a problem but just something to consider notice that when you look at your columns you kind of can see the back wall through it a little bit the back wall looks a lot sharper in color um and those like especially those those grid lines they're just like in your face um, well, we can make them uh, stand out less by changing the transparency. So if I change the transparency to 75%, it becomes a, a, a easier to see through almost, um, kind of clearer. In other words, that um, white background, darker 50% here is kind of coming through a lot more. So. And now you can't see the back wall as direct through looking at the columns. Okay. So changing the transparency can become very important. Okay. All right, so that was the back wall. Let's change the side wall. 
So I can go over here and click on it directly, or I could do it from current selection. I tend to personally do current selection. My reason for doing so is because I can directly see that I am selecting the side wall. All right, and we're going to do the same fill here. We're going to give it a solid fill. Darker, dark blue text to lighter 50, uh, lighter 40% so that it matches. But the transparency we're going to give this guy is going to be 60%. So it's a little darker than the back wall. Which makes sense. Think of that shadow effect. If any of you are into like interior design. So the only other wall left is this floor here, which you kind of barely can even see, but you may be able to see if you look in between the different um, categories, um, between the columns there, there's a floor there. It still has that same color that it had beforehand. <clears throat> so we're going to change that. I'm going to go to floor. And we're going to give the floor a solid fill, but its color is going to be that. Uh, White background one, darker 50%. And it's going to be zero transparency. Look how dark it looks comparatively. So it helps build that up. That shadow more so. Okay. But that can be kind of hard to see the difference, of, especially with the whole chart area being that same color. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the chart area. Chart area. Art area. And we're going to give it a solid fill. And we're going to choose a different color here. We're going to choose olive green, accent three, lighter 60%. There we go. I love this because the background, the back wall, it kind of looks like there's like a light shining through. Is that transparency as well? It's freaky. All right, so that whole section was just really about changing, uh, formatting the walls and the floor and the chart area. Which, you got experience art in the chart area, but you haven't done the, anything with walls because everything you looked at so far has been two dimensional uh, or pie chart or 3D pie chart. So uh, as you get, as you work with different charts, um, you will have different elements that you get to modify. And so don't be afraid to take a look at them and see how changing it's going to. Um, how's it going to affect the look of things, and affect the way you can present your data. But also note that it's the same uh, options, really, right? We're still changing the fills, changing a border or a line. You still have 3D effects. Uh, you still have uh, effects on how big it is. You still have effects on what data is shown. So no differences when you really look at it when it comes to what appears in this format pane. You still have these four options that could appear up here. And then under those, those options are still the same pretty much. So don't get timid, don't be intimidated by, oh, this is a new chart I've never seen before. Oh, what is this thing I need to modify? I've never seen that before. You can you can figure it out. You just uh you just these are still gonna be the same commands, but um these new elements that appear on the chart, you just understand where it is and what what portion of the uh, what's being seen does that represent. Questions? I'm glad you like it. The 3D column chart, honestly, is not, personally, is not one of my favorites to use. I would just use a regular one. Unless someone does, like, you can, you can modify this so that it um, kind of, like, twists in. That's all like together. Oh, I guess I can do that. But yeah, you could modify some of this. Let's see, I'm getting a little crazy here. Let me go way down. Yeah, I didn't really get much out of that.
Uh, but yeah, you can modify it to look all kinds of different, you know, you get different shapes here. Um, yeah. We can change like how we, how we see things in here as well. That's only because it's 3D that we can do that. So those are different things that allow this is 3D that you can modify. And that's usually where people go through with 3D. They like to show it from the side a little bit or something. So you can, ooh, it's three dimensional. It's coming right at you. Uh, that kind of thing. But anyway, it, it's 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 cool. It is cool. I, I when it comes to 3D, the only thing I would ever use 3D with would be uh pie charts. So I feel like that that definitely needs to be uh, needs to stand out more. But everything else, I'm just like, uh, I can just use a 2D. That's just my personal opinion. I'm sure there are tons of people and tons of people who have a lot more experience working with these than I do when it comes to presentations that would chew me out for saying that. But that's just my personal opinion. All right. Let's take a look at doing some more changes here. This is how we're going to do a line chart. I'm going to go back to my attendance by location sheet which we kind of already have lines here, right? But these are smart lines. This is not a line chart. So it's gonna be a little different when we look at next. So I am going to select A3 through F4. So we're gonna look at Los Angeles and Los Angeles only. We're gonna create a line chart for this uh, with markers. So pay close attention to how this looks and the result that we get. So I'm gonna go to insert tab. I'm going to go to my charts group. I'm going to look at my insert line or area chart. Click my drop down. I'm looking for a line chart, but I want one with markers. Okay. So move it down here. Again, pay very close attention to this and this. You will notice that they are the same. Again, showing you how the uh, smart lines are very quick, small graphs that fit within a cell that can tell show you the same thing that you have here, except you don't see the values. You don't see the values here, but you do notice the trend of how it will look. So again, I just wanted to point that out, how similar they are. So um, this is our attendance for just Los Angeles. And so maybe, we, maybe we're about to go to Los Angeles and we need to do some, uh, thinking about what's going to happen when we get to Los Angeles or do we need to have an increase of things or whatever. So um, what I'm going to do with this chart is I moved it so that the corner would be an A13 just because of the instruction set. So but I'm also going to increase the size of this so that it gets to the um, bottom right corner is in G29. So it's a little bigger and it fills out all up to G, which all our data goes to. So there are times where I've seen people do charts for different things. They don't have it like in these first four columns here, they're like, oh, it's a nice square chart. It looks good. Why not just fill it out to be the same same column width as what you had data for, right? It makes it, if it's a little bigger, it's easier to see different things as well uh, because you have more available to be looked at. So it's just a good idea to do that. Um, you don't want to go too big um, because you don't want it to go onto another page. Um, but if it fits out to the same area as your data up here, do it. All right, so similar to what we just did, we're going to change a couple of elements of this chart. So first one's going to be the chart title. So it says Los Angeles. I'm going to actually use an insertion point and put attendance at Los Angeles, because that's what it is. And after Los Angeles, I'm going to put Computer Expo. Because it was the attendance at the Los Angeles Computer Expo. I'm going to reselect this title and right click on it. I'm going to go to the font. And I am going to change its size to size 16 and the font style to bold italic. Okay. 
and that's it. So nothing new really that we've had looked at, but again, just so you get more practice with it. <clears throat> we are going to change some of the we're going to change the axes though, and uh, you've only had time to practice with this once, I believe in the past. Yeah. Um, so let's just look at it again. So I'm going to change the vertical axis. So I am going to uh, right click on it. Oops, didn't select it first. Select the vertical axis. I'm going to right click on it. Click format axis, which is honestly already up now because the format pane is there. <laughs> but just so that you can see it. Yay. It didn't do anything <laughs> different. Still in the format axis. Um, so yeah, if I want to, with some with some of these, when you click on the chart element, you'll get an option to directly format it over here, but not always. Uh, so just be aware of that. The easiest thing again for that I always do is just go to format, select what I want to format, and then format selection so it comes up. That's just me. But all right, so things with this axis. So looking at our data, I mean it's great to look at, right? We can see where zero is. It goes all the way up to 18,000. Um, we can see from this graph that our thing doesn't get to 16,000 quite yet. But again, uh, like I mentioned, the more that you can see of it, the better. So right now, we're having it go down to zero. We already know it's well above zero, right? It's at 8,000, it's above 8,000. So how about we change the minimum from zero to something else? Because we do that, that means this gets kind of zoomed in more. So I'm gonna change the bounds here from zero to 5,000. Notice what happens there. It starts to go, it looks like this just changed going downward, which it didn't. It's just zooming in on it because it's what says better represent what's kind of happening here. Personally, I would have actually probably changed this to probably like 8,000 uh, because I can see even more and this will look like it's towards the bottom. Uh, but I digress. All right, let's change the maximum too. Um, so that it's 17,000, which it actually automatically changed to on its own, uh, which is very convenient. Now I'm gonna change the major unit because this major unit is how much this is going up by each time. It's going up by 2,000 each time. Wouldn't it be better to, I don't know. Wouldn't it be better to look at this in thousands because we clearly see that this is above 9,000, but um, this guy is, close to 11,000, but seeing that 10,000 mark will probably give us a better understanding of where these points are. So I'm gonna change my axis options. I'm gonna change this major to be 1,000. Okay. <clears throat> so it's a lot easier for us to see that this is much closer to 11,000 um, than it is 10,000. It's about uh, three fourths of the way there. So that was just some modifications we can make so that we could see this data better to understand it better. And as you can see, there are tons of different ones that you can do or tons of different things you can change as well. So just things to keep in mind. Okay. All right, any questions there? Sweet. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, make some changes to the plot area into the data series. Um, so again, things we've done before, but it allows us to get more practice with working with a chart and modifying a chart. Um, the main reason that this is, it's just a, just a side note, the main reason this is in this course uh, is because most people literally insert a chart and leave it alone. They don't make any changes to the color, the font, even if it's like kind of hard to see, you got to think about like different screens, projectors you go to, things will look different. Um, and the reason is mainly because they don't know that they can change it. So it's good to know that you can change it in different modifications you can make. And so that you're not afraid to do so um, because, you know, one, you can undo, right, to get back to what you are, where, where you were. But two, um, you can be comfortable with the different options that you have to change and modify. OK, so let's look at the plot area. So I'm going to go up here, plot area, so I can get my plot area selected quite easily. And I'm going to change the fill of this. So fills are our paint bucket. 
and I'm going to give it a solid fill. Notice it automatically changed it because it's set to that olive green one from before. That was the last thing we used. So it recognizes the last one that we used. Uh, we're going to change this though. Um, instead for of uh, instead of olive green, we're going to change this to white um, background one, darker 25%. Now we're gonna actually modify this line. So I'm gonna click on it. This is our data series, right? Because this is where our data is plotted. Just like when we clicked on the pie chart or when we clicked on the columns earlier, it showed us the, it selected the entire data series. And we're gonna make some changes to this. We're gonna change the width of this, um, of this line. So paint bucket, it's at 2.25 point. I'm gonna change this to be at four point. So it makes it a lot thicker, as you can see. Makes it, it means it's easier to see. Some other cool things I can do then is I can actually make changes to these markers. So like we got these little, put somewhere else real quick. We got these little circles here, but because of how thick it got, it might be harder to see those. So I'm gonna make a change uh, to the markers. So notice up here with the line. I have another option for marker. I'm gonna click marker. And I can change the fill of those markers. Because I can change the fill of those, that means if I want, I can insert a picture. I can put my face on there as the markers if I want. Or it's Los Angeles, so I could, or it's a computer expo, maybe I can put computers or I can put people's face, like a face of someone, because it's you know looking at attendance. Um, but I can make those kind of modifications. So uh, what I'm actually going to change here is actually the marker option. Can I do that again? Yes, I can. So we were at line. And now I'm going to change the marker. I'm sorry. Yeah. How, how do you do that? Do you go to the painting? You go to... Oh, yes. The, yes, the paint bucket one. Paint man bucket and then? Yeah. But line. No, no. Okay, yeah. line. Yeah. So we were at line. And then now we're going to marker. Mm hmm Okay, so um, like I said, we could change the markers fill if we wanted to here, the borders, uh, but we're actually gonna look at the marker options um, and because there's some built-in options for our marker. Um, like I said, we could do pictures if we wanted to, but there's some built-in options here. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, change the type built-in. We're gonna change the type of this to the triangle. Notice there's an option for a picture here, just so you can see that. That's, that's the option for picture. But we have a triangle, because it'll be easier to see it in these circles. And I'm gonna change the size of it to be 12. Okay, huge. Much easier to see than those circles we just had, right? Uh, so now I'm going to also change the color of it so it kind of matches the background um, a little bit, but it'll be a little darker than the background is right now. So I'm going to um, I'm going to apply a solid fill to them. And I'm going to change the color. So right now, if you look at it, you can tell from looking at it that it's the same color as the background. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to make it a little darker by changing the white background one darker 50%. So it shows up better on the background. One other thing before I did that, so if I just just to show you a, uh, real quick, don't don't do this, but just so you can see, you still see the triangles, right? Because there's a border around them, a blue border. So I'm gonna give it a solid fill though, like we just did, darker white background, fifty percent. But I don't like that border. It has that blue border around that. Blue border looks tacky on that um, dark background, um, that white dark background. So I'm going to change the border to be no line so that it's just those grayish triangles that are being looked at. Okay. 
there we go there so um we're almost done now with some modifications but this looks a lot better than it did before the line thicker so it's easier to see the markers are uh thicker and larger in a different shape so that they're also also easier to make out um they are different colors too so to help distinguish that even further um so some other modifications that we're going to make now is that we are going to um look at the chart area we're gonna make a change to the chart area so you can either select the chart area or you can go to the format tab current selection group and select chart area however you want to do it but we're going to change the chart area and all i'm going to do the chart area is i'm going to give it a, a border change i'm going to change the border to be a solid line you may kind of notice that we actually get a you, you can kind of see it through the um through the the border that's around it it got a little blue there remember that the last thing that was there was a blue border uh, on those triangles so that's where that get it got that color idea from so i'm going to check now though uh, i'm going to check the white uh background one darker 15 percent okay so that's what i changed my border to and so if i click somewhere else you can kind of see it it may be hard for you to see but it is darker than it almost looks like the same color as the lines uh in between each cell um uh, but it might be hard for you to see um again this is not a part of it but just so you can clearly see it a little more i'm gonna do this so you can see that it's there all right i'm gonna undo that but i just want you to see that that color change is actually there so There we go. All right. Uh, any questions about formatting? Different ways, plot area, chart area. Okay. So one last thing with the line chart that's different from the other. Well, technically you can do this on any of them, or not any of them. You can do this on um, the column chart show too. But we're going to insert something that's known as a trend line. And what a trend line is, is it will show you a, um, it'll show you a graph that is a smooth curve um, that will kind of um, be a prediction of what is happening. So it'll give a trend, so to speak, but it'll be a smooth curve. By smooth curve, what I mean is it won't look like this. So this is not smooth because it has jagged corners as it goes from point to point. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a trend line. And so to add a trend line, I am going to take my chart. And I'm going to do it from here. Actually, I'm just going to click chart elements. Trend line. Notice what we're just me hovering over it. I get a dotted blue line that's kind of going through um, the graph that we have. So I'm going to select this drop down here. I get a couple of different options. Um, the, if you take any business statistic courses, you'll learn more about uh, what a moving air average is. Um, some of these other options, you'll learn more about what forecasting is uh, and an exponential. But I'm just going to choose linear. So it's just a straight line. And it has now been inserted. And so there's our trend line. And so there's pretty much uh, there's some math that goes on in the background that it um, it graphs a straight line to predict uh, what would happen each year. So at 2013, this is the value that you would get as a prediction. Um, at 2017, this is the value it would get as a prediction. And so you could use that by expanding out um, to 2000 and 2018, so you could figure out what it would be. And actually, you do get an equation for this. Um, so if you like have the trend line selected, you don't have to do this, but and if you had the trend line select date, you would also be able to say, hey, put the equation on the chart and it's right there. So if I wanted to plug in the X value, so like 2018 into this equation, I would get my prediction of what 2018's attendance would look like. Okay. Um, do you note that this prediction is based off of these five points? That's not much to go off of. However, 
Um, you also notice that for all of these guys, it's a well above its prediction. But for this guy, it's well below its prediction. That's because it's kind of averaging between all of these. Okay. So just something to keep in mind. And there's also some other stuff that you can display on here. Uh, for instance, this R squared tells you uh, which percentage of the data that's given is actually um, covered by this graph. So it would only cover about 65% of it. So uh, I won't get too much detail of that, but this is very powerful and very useful in data analytics. Uh, most of the time when I do, um, when I look at trends, uh, what I do have to do, what I use to justify whether or not the equation I came up with is good or if the trend line I have is good is R squared. So I look at it and then I discuss what it means and look at its uh, the percentage of variability that it um, that it represents. So um, these are some cool type things. And you, if you ever get more into data analytics or you take business statistics or uh, what's another class? Mathematical analysis for business, I think it's called, or quantitative methods for business is another one. But anyway, if you ever get into any of those type of courses, you would use this stuff. So, but if you don't and you own a business or you're working for a business, you can add these um, on here just by, like you did any other time, you add something to the data to be viewed at, you know, click on the little bar graphs and then select them and see what happens, see what, see what it looks like. And maybe um, ask someone, what does this mean? Or go off of what I just told you what it means. This is an equation of the line that's here, which can be used to predict the values that you would get. So anyway, just a little tidbit to add in there. Um, you don't actually have to add this trend line though, label. But anyway, questions about that? No? All right. I honestly think this is a great stopping point. I'm going to go file. I'm going to save as. And then um, on Thursday, we can look at the third objective where we'll start looking at some uh, smart art graphic on these two pages or these two sheets, excuse me. Um, and we'll look at making a template and look at some more stuff with smart art graphics. So um, with 6B. So um, before I stop recording, are there any questions about anything at all? From No. No? No? Okay. All right. Well, I'll start recording now.